Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about polynomial and rational functions for business calculus. We'll start with a quick review of terminology. Revenue was the amount of money generated from the sale of X items, so we want to remember that that's equal to price times quantity. A lot of times we write that as R of X equals P times X, so it's how much money do we charge and then how many things did we sell, and that tells us how much money we received. Cost is the amount of money spent to make the items. And then profit is the revenue minus the cost. So P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X. Super important that you put the R of X first and that you put the C of X in parentheses when you're finding the profit. So our first example is on cost. It says a company manufactures skateboards. The fixed costs are $1,800 and the total cost of making 25 skateboards a day is 2,500. Assuming the total cost per day, C of X is linear, write an equation for the cost function. So we know C of X, because it's linear, is equal to MX plus B. Remember, B was our fixed cost, and we can see it says the word fixed is 1800. So B is 1800. We don't know M, but we can find it because we know that when X is 25, C is going to be equal to 2500. So let's write that as 2500 equals M times 25 plus 1800. We're going to move the 1800 over, so we're subtracting it. That tells us 700 is equal to M times 25. And then when you divide by 25, you end up with M is 28. All right, so that allows us to write C of X is equal to 28 times X plus 1800. All right, before we can do part B, we need to talk about average cost. So average cost, C bar of X, is found by dividing the cost function by the number of items. So you can see I have C bar of X is C of X over X. So we're taking the total cost, dividing by how many items we made, and that gives us the average cost function. Let's take a look at that. So let's go back to our C of X is 28X plus 1800 for our skateboard, and let's find the average cost function. So we're gonna do C bar of X, is 28x plus 1800 over x. That's all we have to do. Now let's sketch that. So this is going to be part C. We want to sketch this over the interval from 1 to 30, and we really want to look and pay attention to what's happening to the average cost per skateboard as production increases. The easiest way to do this is let's head over to Desmos. So in Desmos, I'm going to still call this C of X because I can't do C bar. I'm going to put parentheses 28X plus 1800, and then I'm going to divide by X. I need to make sure that I put in that restriction for my domain. So I had one less than or equal to X, which was less than or equal to 30. Okay, I know we don't see anything right now. So let's head over to the settings. And what we want to do is do that same restriction. So from 1 to 30. And then on the y-axis, let's go from 0. And I know it's going to be like at least 1,800. So let's put 1,800. It will take care of the steps. I can kind of zoom in a little so you can see the beginning and the end here. Let's add a table of values to get a better look at what's happening to the function. So on the settings, I'm going to say add a table. And let's start at 1, that's where our domain started, and let's go like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 for our values of x. We can see that when I make one item, the average value is 1,828. It's the 1,800 plus the 28 to make one item. If we switch to 5, the average value is 388. What happened here is it's still $28 a piece for the skateboards, but we get to divide up that 1,800 by 5. Maybe you can see that better at 10, where 10 the average value is 208. What does that do? It says the 1800 was divided by 10 now, that's 180, plus 28, that's where we get the 208. So what happens is the more and more skateboards we make, the more and more we split up the fixed cost, and you can see that the value of the average cost function is decreasing. As it decreases, it's decreasing not to zero, but really it's de decreasing to get closer and closer to this 28, to this amount that each item costs. So let's put on a second line here. Let's put in y equals 28, because I want you to see that's where it's tending to. So if 
we were to expand this. So let's say instead of saying x is between 1 and 30, let's just say x is greater than or equal to 1, right? This will give us a better view of it. Then when I look, this line for the average cost is getting closer and closer to this line 28. So this line 28 is a horizontal asymptote. And hopefully you've seen asymptotes before. Asymptotes are ends behavior. It kind of says what happens when I look towards infinity or negative infinity. We don't have negative infinity really here because we can't make negative items. So we are just looking on the right side. We're saying what happens if we make more and more items? Well, it's tending to go to this 28. So hopefully you can see it visually, but if you don't see it visually, you see, should be able to see it from the equation that this 28x over x just goes to 28, and that's an asymptote. So we'll have asymptotes again. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to them pretty quickly. We'll start talking about something called a limit, but you will see this pop up some more. But we do want to notice that the average cost is decreasing over time when I'm dividing by x. So let's try that for a different scenario. Um, let's look at a moving truck. So a moving company can buy a used moving truck for $29,160. The company believes they will spend $2,090 in repairs and maintenance in the first year, and then that amount will increase by $180 per year after that, that they own the truck. So the cost to own the truck for X shares can be modeled by C of X is $29,160 plus 2,000X plus 90X squared. What happened here? Definitely, you can see the 29160 initial cost that was spent. And then this 2090 the first year, and 180 in additional years is where the 2000x plus 90x squared comes from. For now, you're not responsible for coming up with that. Like, it's given the explanation just kind of lets you know where these numbers are coming from. We will be talking about stuff like this and how did that come together as we go throughout our learning. So part A says construct the average cost function for the cost of the moving truck. We need to take C of X and we're going to divide it by X. So I have C bar of X is 29,160 plus 2,000 X plus 90 X squared over X. Done, All right? So there's our first part. We have the average cost function. Now that we have that, Again, we would like to sketch it. So this time we're going to go over the interval from 1 to 25. And this time when we're looking at it, we're going to see if there's a minimum cost, right? So this is going to have a little bit different look to it. Last time we started with a linear cost function, and this time we had a quadratic. So quadratic changes things. So what we want to do when we're looking at the graph is see if there's a minimum cost per year and what that minimum cost is and what happens. So once again, we're going to head to Desmos to try to graph this. Okay. So just like last time, I'm just going to call this C of X equals parentheses 29,160 plus 2,000 X plus 90 X squared. Divided by X. And remember, we have a domain. Our domain was 1 which was less than or equal to x, which was less than or equal to 25, so different domain this time. Okay. We need to fix our settings. So over on the settings, this time I want to go from 1 to 25, and then my y Let's put zero just to have it as a good place to start. And then we can see this 29,160. So let's just start at something like 35,000. Okay, and it'll put the steps in for us. So it's an educated guess of where things start and stop. Okay, so we can see the curve, right? So this curve is starting up here. If again, if we want to see the numbers, I'm going to go to the edit and say, let's turn this into a table so I can go and put in one and I can see where it started. Uh, maybe again, we want to do a few years to get to 25. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. But this is just for our own curiosity. So we have some numbers to look at. So at 1, it was 31,250. And we can see it dropped to 8,282, 5,816, until it gets down to 25, which says 5,416.4. All right, so it was going down. 
But this time you can see it didn't stay down, right? So at one point in 20 years, it said 5,258. And at 25, it went up again to 5,416. So it didn't do the same thing as our last example of making the skateboards where it got lower, lower, lower. This time it does go back up. So go to the graph and click on it. And it's a little subtle, but if you look at these points that we had on here that are in green, there's an extra one that's gray. And this extra one that is gray is the minimum. So this shows us this is the smallest amount that it's ever going to be. So Desmos does that for us. When we click on it, it will tell us the extrema. So extrema is max or min. We're looking for a min. So this says our minimum occurs 18 years after the truck was purchased, and the minimum amount would be $5,240. So it's just a trick. You're not having to do any mathematics. You're just having to click on the graph and then pay attention to what gets highlighted. So let's do one more, and again on cars. So it says the data team for a large rental car agency determines the cost C of X in thousands of operating X thousand cars per month can be modeled by the function C of X is 0 0.02 X minus four cubed plus 64, where X is between one and 45. Well, really one is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to 45. Part A, construct the average cost function. Then part B, we're going to graph it and find the number that produces the minimum average cost. So just like the one we did previously for the moving truck. So let's start with C bar of X. We have 0 0.02 X minus 4 cubed plus 64 over X. Now let's go back to Desmos and graph this. Again, I'm calling this C of X equals parentheses 0 0.02 parentheses x minus 4 cubed plus 64 close parentheses divide by x let's put in our domain which was 1 less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 45. Okay. you can kind of see it kind of looks like a line down here so this says we need to change our settings um, we know that we want the settings for X to be bigger, so we're going to say 1 to 45, because that's our domain. And then for the Y, let's do 0. Um, and you can see it's a lot smaller, so let's take a guess of 100 and see what happens. Okay, so 100 was plenty. It brought it way down, and we can see it doesn't look like a line anymore. We can definitely see the curve. Again, you can see it goes down, but yeah, it really goes up afterwards. So we have this big curve going on here. So our trick to finding the minimum is click on the function. Okay. As soon as I click on it, there's a point that generated. It says 14, 6. So this X is 14, and that gives us a value of 6. So 14, 6. Let's go back over to our PowerPoint so we can talk about what 14, 6 means. 14, 6. Remember, X was thousands of cars, so this would mean 14,000 cars. And then that says it would be $6,000 per month would be the minimum amount spent. All right, let's try a different thing. Let's look at revenue. So it says the price for which X thousand laptops will sell can be modeled by the function P equals 1500 minus 7.5X. Construct the revenue function. All right. We had talked about earlier, R of X is P times X. So P was the price. So here, R of X is P, 1500 minus 7.5X times X. It's really best to go ahead and distribute that. So let's have 1500X minus 7.5X squared. We're going to find the domain of the revenue function. So we can do this by hand. Or we could do it with a calculator, and I think you're going to find it's a lot easier just to look at the graph. So let's try that. This time we can call it R of X because we were talking about revenue. So we had 1500X minus 7.5X squared. Okay. So if I kind of zoom in a little bit, we can make it bigger, and we can start seeing there's a beginning and an end, right? So I can see a green line that looks like it's going through the x-axis. I can see a line that looks like it's touching 200. So let's go ahead and use that to say 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 200. 
And what that does, it gives us only times that the revenue is positive, and revenue should only be positive. You can tell this is pretty quick, so let's change the settings a little. Sometimes it's hard to decide what it should be, so if you go back to the table, we could get some beginning values. Let's just put in a few, one, five, let's do 50. Let's kind of go around a little to get a good feel for what's happening. As we go through the semester, we'll get better at this, but we can see kind of these bigger values, 56,000, 75,000. So let's go over to our settings and pick something a little higher. So X, we know we're going zero to 200. And let's say Y, let's go zero to, let's do 100,000. Okay, <clears throat> that way we can see everything. So let me kind of zoom in for you a little and you can see this nice big curve. So our domain is zero to 200. So here we have our domain zero to 200. Next, let's find some values. So we put some values in before, but let's be pretty precise now. And let's look at the values for 1, 50, 100, 150, and 200. All right, so I'm just going back to my table and I'm going to edit it. So I had 1, let's do 50, let's look at 100, let's look at 150, and then 200. So these are the ones we want to see. So when X is 1, our revenue is $1,492.50. For 50, it's 56,250. For 100, it was 75,000. For 150, it was 56,250 again. So the same revenue for 50 items as 150. And at 200, it's zero. So you have to wonder, like, why could that be? Well, it's because the price was decreasing. So as the price is getting smaller and smaller, at some point, the price is zero. At some point, if you kept decreasing the price, there's nothing left over, right? So it's, you're giving these things away, which if you're giving away, you get zero revenue. So we can see this increase, decrease happening to our graph. So last thing to do with this graph is to say, well, where was it maximized? What is the value of X? How many items did we sell when we got the most revenue? So looking at it, we can see from our values, but remember we said we can click the graph and Watch what happened. Let me go back again. I'm going to go back. This value was green before, but when I click it, it turns it to gray. So notice all of the other colors are green, but this one that's gray, that's our maximum. So it says 100, right? When we sell 100 items, we have the maximum revenue, which is $75,000. So our last problem today is looking at how we can model functions and how we can take data and turn it into a function that we can use to make other projections. So let's look at this graph that I have from Statista and it's consumer firework revenue and it says it's exploding. So there are two things going on here. There's a darker white, like a brighter white that's consumers and a lighter gray that's display. So people that are producing um, <coughs> fireworks, but we want, we care about the consumer. So look at this consumer data and we can see it's going up. It is exploding like they say. And let's see if we can take the data and turn that into a function. So I went to the American Pyrotechnics Association and I grabbed um, some information, some revenue over the years. So I have in 1998, $284 million was spent in, on fireworks. In 2003, it was $517 million. 2008, it was 627 million. 2013, consumers spent 662 million. And then 2018, it was 945 million. So this is where the numbers came from the chart and or from the graph, and now we can look at them in a chart. So notice I didn't put the zeros in for the millions. So that kind of complicates it. And we're going to graph this. But as we graph it, we don't want to put 1998, 2003, 2008. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to let X be the number of years after. 1998 and why will be the revenue in millions. So when I go over to Desmos to graph, I'll be graphing 0 with 284, 5 with 517, 10 with 627, 15 with 662, and then 20 with 945. It just makes things easier. Once we're over there, we're going to find a regression function that models this data. 
We're going to round any of the coefficients to four decimal places just to make it easier as we continue to use it. And then, based on that, we're going to make a prediction. So we're going to forecast what's going to happen in the year 2023. So to start, we need to enter the data. So this plus sign that says add an item, we want to add a table. And that's how we're going to enter our points. So our points were 0 with 284. Then at 5, we had 517. At 10, it was 627. At 15, we had 662. And then at 20, we had 945. Okay. Notice we have these little points, but there's a magnifying glass that says zoom fit. So hit the zoom fit and it does that. It makes a screen for us so that we didn't have to pick the window. It picked it for us. All right. So when we're looking at this data, I know we've talked about lines a lot. So let me show you what would happen if we tried to turn this into a line. Look at the table it says X1, Y1. So first term, second term. So we want to figure out how the second term fits the first term. So we're going to hit Y1. When I type Y1, it does a subscript. It tells me there's five elements in my chart. You don't want to hit equal. On the keyboard, you go to the ABC, and there's a squiggly looking mark right here. So it goes AB, um, exclamation point, bracket, bracket. And I want this little squiggle. It calls a tilde. And we would like to make something. So if we tried to do a line, Remember, a line is like AX plus B. So let's hit A. We want to say X1. X1 ties it to our data. And then we're going to say plus B. And it sort of fits. Like, it's not perfect. I can see there's a little higher, a little lower. Um, so it gives us an idea of what would it look like if we did a line as a model. Let's try something else. I'm going to turn that off. I'm just going to unclick that purple, and it goes away. It does not look quadratic, so I'm not going to try a quadratic, but I am going to try a cube. So I'm going to say Y1. Again, I have to hit the tilde. Now this time, if I want to do a cube, I would have AX squared plus BX plus, sorry, AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. So watch, I have AX1, and I will say cubed, plus BX1, and then this would be squared, so we're going down plus CX1, and then plus D. So this brings all of them in. Now look at this. This fits a lot better. So see how it kind of touches. It. It's kind of close to all the values. And again, let's put the line back in so we can compare. So I click back on the purple. So you can see the purple was kind of off, right? It was either a lot higher or a lot lower than a lot of the points. And the curve really fits better. So again, I'm going to get rid of that line just to show you. So here's this nice curve that's really fitting the graph pretty well. The A, B, and C are listed, so you can see them. It says 0.247333 for A, negative 7.34857 for B, 81.01, sorry, 81.0881 for C, and then 280.071 for D. So what I said we were going to do is we're going to do four decimal places. So I'm going to type in f of x equals I have 0.2473, and then I'm going to do x plus, we can do plus or we could do minus since it's negative, 7.3486. And remember that x is supposed to be cubed. Let's go back and cube it. And this was x squared. Then we're going to say plus 81.0881x. And then our last one is plus 280.071. So now we have our other graph on there as well. What that lets us do is then we can make predictions. So I could say, well, what will we think for 2023, which would be 25 years later, right? We stopped um, earlier at 2018. So we do five more years, which would be 25. And it says 1578.461. Our expectation in 2023 is that they're spending $1,578.461 million, right? So that's going um, into the billions of dollars being spent for fireworks. 
So as we do these problems, it'll be important to always graph the data first so we can see what the data looks like. From that, we use it visually to decide what we think the graph is. Do we think it's a lie? Do we think it's a cube? Do we think it's a square? Then we'll use Desmos to get that regression analysis that we can make predictions from.